The main focus of this topic is going to be understanding short run economic fluctuations. Before we dive into these notes, I wanna just start by showing you some data about economic fluctuations. So here I've gone to Fred and I've just pulled up real GDP for the United States. You can see that on average, GDP is growing over time, right? That's what we want in terms of long run economic growth. And that's what we're talking about when we describe the production function in the last video. What factors affect how a country grows over the long term? But when we look at this picture of long run real GDP growth, it actually masks a lot of what's going on in the economy in the short term. So if instead of looking at this picture where GDP is growing at a rate of say 3% per year, I look at the percent change in GDP over time, you can see that there are a lot of really big fluctuations in the growth rate of GDP. So perhaps on average GDP grows at 3% per year, but at some points in time here, we have GDP growing in excess of 7%. And we also have big drops in GDP, a contraction in the economy where GDP is shrinking year to year. In those situations, we say we have a recession. Remember, recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth. So you can see that as this GDP growth rate drops below that zero line, you'll notice that the gray bars on the graph represent periods of economic recession. All right, so here we have short-term business cycle fluctuations. This picture is showing me long-run economic growth. That's great, but what about short-term business cycle fluctuations? The government has an interest in trying to reduce short-term business cycle fluctuations because we would prefer to grow at a steady 3% per year than to have wild swings in our economy, growing sometimes 7%, sometimes shrinking, where we have unemployment and underutilized resources in our economy. So the government tries to minimize these short-term business cycle fluctuations to make them smaller, to have a more slow, steady growth rate of say two or 3% per year. All right, so short-term business cycle fluctuations, hopefully now you understand looking at the data what I'm talking about when I say business cycle fluctuations. We're gonna go back to our guided notes to start to talk just a little bit about how we might begin to conceptualize those fluctuations in the economy. All right, so what do we know about short-term business cycle fluctuations? We know that, that they happen because we can see in the data that we have these ups and downs and swings around our long run economic growth rate. We know that they are irregular and unpredictable. A lot of people spend a lot of time wondering what's going to happen in the economy in the future. But so far, we don't have a good way to predict when another recession will occur, how long a recession will last, or whether an expansion will continue. We have guesses, we look at data, but in some sense, each economic business cycle is a bit different. The last recession driven by a housing crisis due to misinformation in financial markets, this recession due to a public health crisis. So to the extent that those big events are somewhat unpredictable, recession and expansion is also unpredictable. We know also that our macroeconomic indicators tend to move together. GDP, unemployment, inflation, it have sometimes predictable relationships like with GDP and unemployment, right? GDP goes up, unemployment goes down, 
We have a recession, GDP shrinks, unemployment increases. But sometimes a little bit less predictable, like inflation tends to increase in expansions and decreasing contractions, but it's not as strong of a relationship as GDP and unemployment. But all of our macroeconomic indicators, for the most part, tend to be affected by these business cycle fluctuations and tend to move together. So the last one here is that there is an especially strong relationship between unemployment and output. I know that if we're in an expansion, unemployment is going down. And if we're in a contraction, unemployment is going up. We can use this relationship between output and unemployment to help us think about how big of a recession we're having. Now is actually a really good time to be talking about this because we are in the middle of a recession. I don't know how long it's gonna last. We don't know what the output gap is right now. And I'll define that in a second. But we do have more up-to-date statistics about unemployment. And in this moment where policymakers are trying to decide how big of a stimulus package to pass, what type of monetary policy to adopt. It's really important that we just use whatever data we have available to us. 